My name is Alex George, and I'm an Ansible specialist. And today I'm going to be walking through Event Driven an Ansible, specifically with Datadog as the event source. While this discussion and demonstration will focus on Datadog, this really does work on any single agent based monitoring solution, whether that's Dynatrace, whether that's Prometheus Alert Manager. It does give you a ton of flexibility in terms of what sort of monitoring solution you want to use. So for Datadog specifically, it was easy for me to get started because there's already a collection that exists to install the agent. So I was able to put the collection in my execution environment, create a very basic configuration, and I was often running across Red Hat Enterprise Linux and Windows without really knowing where the files needed to go or the actual process to install the agent. The collection handled all that for me, which was pretty convenient since I had not used Datadog before. On the Datadog side of things, I just need to create one webhook configuration so pointing to the event-driven Ansible controller endpoint that I had set up, and then I can add it to as many or as few monitors as I have set up in Datadog. So if I only have two monitors, I only want to respond to one, I can just add that to that one single monitor and that's it. So there's still a little bit of control over what monitors send to event-driven Ansible. And then obviously on the event-driven Ansible side, I have a rule book that would define what job templates or workflow job templates to actually send the issue to. So this can be very simple where I'm just notifying personnel via Slack or creating a Saris Now ticket, or I can go into a much more complex workflow where I do all that as well as perform the remediation and update personnel if things go well, or if there's an issue, if I need manual intervention, I can build that into my larger workflow as well. So from an architecture standpoint, this is really what I have set up. So I am using Ansible to do that initial installation configuration. So I could just define how I wanted that monitor to be set up on each of my individual hosts. That was deployed out to a Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 system and a Windows system. Those are reporting back to Datadog with the API key that I set up during that configuration. I've created two monitors that have a webhook attached to them. So if an alert comes in for those particular monitors based on whatever parameters I have set in Datadog, that will alert my event-driven Ansible controller. And then if the rules that I've defined are Met, meet the appropriate conditions, it will then trigger, in my case, a workflow job template that then goes through the process of notifying via my chat, which is matter most, creating a service now ticket and running that remediation. So this is very reusable depending on what your tools are. Replace the monitoring solution, replace the chat program, replace your ticketing system. So this is a fairly reusable workflow, which gives you a good idea of how this can work across different infrastructures and different uh, enterprise systems. So from that configuration standpoint, this is what I have set up for Datadog. Obviously, you can set the exact version, which is nice, so I don't have to always install the latest or worry about having different agent versions installed across my enterprise architecture. And then I've defined a config so I can check the logs, check any sort of applications are running. And then one specifically that I'm going to be using are CPU and memory usage. And then I decided to set up an HTTP check. So instead of having to worry about monitoring Nginx versus Apache versus IIS, I just wanted to verify the web service itself was up and running. So this made it fairly easy. So this does give you a lot of capability if it's just a simple web service or it's an application that has a web front end, I could check to see if that is properly running. From the Ansible side of things, this is a portion of the rule book that I'm using. So as you can see, I've got it set up to listen to a specific port. I've added in my SSL search and I've got a token. That token ensures that I'm only getting this from an authorized source, especially since Datadog is a publicly hosted service and it's outside of my infrastructure, I did want to make sure that I have that token authentication for any sort of payloads that come in just to add that additional layer of security. And then from the rule side of things, it's based on whatever monitor name that I've got. In this case, triggered is added in the front because the alert itself has been triggered. And then I'm running a specific workflow job template and I've got it set up to only run on that particular host, which is why I'm passing in a VM name as an extra bar. So let's dive into the demonstration to see what I've got set up in Datadog, as well as actually trigger some of these alerts. So jumping into the demonstration itself, as you can see, this is console.redout.com. So this is public automation hub, and this is that Datadog collection that I was talking about earlier. This will be included in the description down below. But there is a simple role for actually installing the agent where I can just define what the configuration is, uh, as I showed in the discussion earlier. So from the rulebook side of things, from the Ansible side, so I do have one rulebook set up, which is basically just listening for events from Datadog, exactly as you saw before. And I have both listening for CPU high load as well as a web server being down. I will demonstrate both of those. And then I've also added in just other alerts. So the beauty, especially with event-driven Ansible, is if I do event.meta is defined, 
It will give me that JSON payload that's coming from the event source, which if you've ever seen a webhook or any sort of API call outbound from a source, every single JSON payload is different. So this can be a good starting point to figure out exactly what gets sent on a specific trigger. So let's jump into Datadog itself. So I'm logged in. This is the initial dashboard when you show up. So I do have a few hosts that are running here. So if I go into the host section itself, you can see I have two hosts running. One is Red Hat Enterprise Linux, so it shows up as a Linux operating system, and one is Windows, both operating on a specific agent version. Conveniently, since I defined the version Ansible, they're running the exact same version. And then what I did was I set up an integration. So if you go into the integration section, I created a single webhook. And that webhook, conveniently enough, is porting to my event-driven Ansible controller service. So it is that 4999 endpoint that I showed before in my rulebook. And then I've added in a specific payload. This is all specific to the webhook capability of Datadog itself. I will include the link to setting up that webhook down below in the description. But these are essentially environment variables that I can pass through. And the reason why this is nice is I can just have one webhook configured and just assign it to each individual monitor that I want. And I can take out the event title or alert title. And then I've got the host name so I can respond to the specific event and only the specific host that the alert is happening on. And then I did add in this custom header for authorization with that bearer token. So this is how I added in that extra step to ensure that I'm not getting API requests from random websites. I'm only getting it from this Datadog service. So then I have a few monitors set up. As I said before, I only have two monitors, which again makes my process a little bit easier to manage. But I have a web server down and a CPU uh, load is high web service. So I'm just going to edit the web server is down to see what this looks like. So again, this, I specifically used HTTPD as a network check rather than trying to monitor a specific service. Um, and it's just like any other monitoring tool where you basically set up what I want to monitor for. Is it running? Check alerts. What counts as warning versus critical? All those pieces, as well as you know how long to wait for evaluation. All I had to do after setting up the webhook, so if you have initial monitors that you already have, I just need to add in at webhook, EDA webhook. So I could just simply do at and it will pop up as the, in my case, only available webhook. That's it. So very simple to set up, very simple to get started. And then if I save, I can also add in, you know, at mention or it does specifically say the webhook and their abilities to do test certifications. So if I want to see a test of, you know, alert or monitor, all that is capable from here as well. So very easy way to get started and see what that JSON payload looks like without actually having an alert to trigger anything. So once I had that all set up, I just obviously need to have a rulebook activation running. So I have this Datadog alert rulebook running with those three rules that I showed before. So I'm going to jump into the history and scroll to the very bottom. And then I actually want to trigger this. So right now I have, again, those two servers running. This is that one RHEL server with two CPUs running. And then this is my Windows server with IIS running. So I'll just refresh it to verify that it is still live. And I'll jump into the terminal. So because I have two cores running, I'm just going to run this command twice, and this will essentially set up the load. I'm monitoring to see if load is greater than 90% on the host to trigger that automation to increase the number of cores, in my case, in Red Hat virtualization. But the automated remediation could really apply across VMware, Nutanix, or even a cloud platform. I could migrate between the different instance types. And then from the Windows side of things, I'm just going to stop IIS. And I'll see very quickly that the service is stopped. So I'll do a quick refresh and you'll see that the service is down. So this will actually cause both of those alerts to trigger inside Datadog. So I'll jump into the web server is down first. And eventually you'll see that this will go from green to red for my Windows host. But it'll take a little bit as we get there. And I can shift to five minutes because it'll be a fairly quick response. The good thing about using a monitoring tool like this is it still takes in whatever sort of delay is built into that monitoring process where it's verify that this particular alert has been triggered for five times across two minutes, or I set it to do the average load or the min load over a certain period of time. So especially for something like CPU usage or disk space, I don't want it to immediately trigger when I get over a certain disk space. Maybe I want it over you know, a period of an hour that it's been pegged at that, then I want to have that alert trigger. So you can see that I'm actually going through that process now of remediating the web service. And I do want to show what this workflow looks like. So this is a very reusable workflow. So it actually goes through the process of creating a ServiceNow ticket, notifying me via Mattermost. 
which I can see here, and it's got a link to that ServiceNow ticket. So if I refresh my ticket information, I can see that that, that, that has been created. Going back to Automation Controller, I can then see it actually does my remediation, and if it's successful, closes out that ServiceNow ticket and notifies me via Mattermost that it's done. If it fails for whatever reason, because my automation has built in restart the service and verify it's up and running, if it fails, it'll update the service now ticket to say the automation failed and manual intervention is required, and it will notify me via my chat program that I also need to take manual intervention. So especially if you have someone on call and I need this notification, I don't have to sit there and wait and see what's going on. I can just monitor this chat and say, Yes, the incident was created, it's good, and oh, the incident was actually fixed. So remediation is progressed, and conveniently enough, I actually have already triggered the high CPU alert as well, so I can verify while that's going on that this is up and running. So my website is back up, and then I can probably jump into Red Hat virtualization at this point and see it was two cores. Let's do a refresh, and hopefully the remediations happen, and I'm up to seven. So very quick remediation. You probably don't need to add five cores, but this is a nice extreme example where I can show very simply with Ansible taking events specifically through event-driven Ansible and these rule book activations. I can see the audits of what's come in. So I can see that the high CPU usage was detected or that the web application was down. I can see that JSON payload that I talked about before. So very clear in the information that I set up in the webhook in Datadog with that alert title. And as you can see, this is that event title that I'm monitoring for and triggering off of. I specifically want to use triggered versus warning so you can have different actions as you get closer to an alert. All of that can be set up here. From the remediation side, all I'm doing is, in my case, logging into Red Hat virtualization, getting the current CPU information and adding five. So fairly straightforward. I can build in logic to not exceed a certain amount or with something down the line of policy as code, I can ensure I'm not setting the CPU sockets to a certain number. So I'm not trying to add 20 CPU sockets to an individual virtual machine. Might be outside of my enterprise parameters. From the web service side of things, all I'm doing is ensuring IS is running, and then I'm actually just verifying that it can connect to the index page, and I'm also ensuring that the inventory host name is in the contents. So I'm actually looking through that HTML page and verifying that this is there. So for me, it makes sure not only is the service up and running, but it is responding properly. You could add in status code, you could add certain checks, but for me, this ensures that their service is responding exactly as I would expect them to. So you can add in as many different monitors as you want. Obviously, in this case, I was just monitoring for web server down and high CPU usage, but think about high memory, disk space, common things that you might wanna to respond to. And then think about this workflow where I can start with these pieces and either just do the service now ticket mattermost or do the full process. And all I need to do is change out this piece of actually doing the remediation. Everything else is exactly the same between my web service and CPU issue. So that's just a quick look about how I can integrate Datadog and Event Driven Ansible together. This is just a starting point. So take a look at what monitors you already have or what monitors you wanna create. And then make sure you create the rule book that has those specific conditions and then tie that into a job template or a workflow job template that you have set up to perform that remediation. It does not have to immediately respond to every single alert and does not immediately have to do a full remediation. Start small, start simple, take those common alerts that you're getting and start doing some simple responses, which could be as simple as creating a service now ticket, creating a chat response, and this will provide consistency as you're creating those notifications and uh, tickets. And then obviously will provide consistency for the remediation as you build that out as well. So in the description down below, I will include that Datadog collection link, the documents from Datadog itself for the agent and webhook, as well as my rule book that I showed earlier in this discussion. So hopefully this does give you a good idea of how these tool tools can link together. But remember, it doesn't just have to be Datadog. It really can be any agent based monitoring solution. So thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit more about how Datadog and Event Driven Ansible can work together. Click my picture on the right to subscribe or click the image on the left to watch another video.